Hello everyone and welcome to a hair tutorial with me. This is going to be a step by step tutorial. This I've decided to do it in this book because I did a little snippet and time lapse in the book review for this. So this will be kind of the time lapse that was added to the review so you'll have already seen this bit but this is the step by step uh, how I colour over dark grayscale hair and still achieve a really nice bright hair tone uh, for your grayscale colouring books. So stay tuned. It is only going to be four pencils with castle art. So it won't be a very tricky one. It's not loads and loads of colours. So let's get started. So on the actual book review, you see me do this. So I'm going to do the rest of the hair step by step so you can see me going around curves things like that and makes it really really great practice for everyone who's got darker grayscale books because I do know that a lot of people will sit and think oh, I can't have that book it's too dark I'm scared of that but you can actually get some amazing colour purely from having a dark grayscale it's just using the right pencils and going lighter to achieve that brighter look on top of dark gray scale so without further ado i'm just going to bring this book a bit further down and then i'm going to show you the colors that we're using today to create this look so this is kind of like a honey chestnut brown color so we'll be using van dyke brown hopefully it's gonna focus on it let me just get this up to focus there van dyke brown 069 sepia 070 and then this is like our mid-tone color which is yellow ochre 077 and our last lightest tone is cadmium yellow 007 they are literally the colors that i'm going to be using so if you don't want to listen to my voice or you don't want to do it step by step and you just want to see it start to finish there is a cog settings on youtube videos where you can change the re resolution of the video and speed it up um, but today this will be step by step so we're going to start off just exactly how i showed you in the book review now for some reason my camera is picking up this strange etching i don't know why it's doing that um let me just see if it's something to do with the exposure maybe can this be moved a little bit closer okay so what i'm going to do is again i'm going to start off with the cadmium yellow so i'm going to put that on screen and then i'm just going to lightly very very lightly fill in don't have to be neat fill in that area where you see your highlight on the hair now at this point you can do section by section like I'm going to do or you can actually do um, the whole page in this tone first or like I said you can just do section by section. Now I'm using this book because I bought this for the colorathon, um, and it, I thought it would be nice to do it in here because I just love really dark grey scale it's it's my thing <laughs> so next we're going to move on to yellow ochre now the trick for doing her I'm using a Tagal I really like this sharpener it has one to five different lengths of your tip so this gives me this is on number four and it gives me a really nice tip without taking too much off the pencil so you need to have a tip that's quite sharp like I'm showing you here and so long as you have that tip really sharp you will get a really good grain or strokes to the hair it will look more realistic the sharper your pencil is um, there is artists that can do it without it being so sharp but I prefer it and I've got used to doing it with a sharp pencil so next we're going to move on to yellow ochre and we are going to start with the so this hair droops down like this so when we're doing our curves if you need to turn your page over turn it over if your wrist doesn't naturally turn that way 
turn your stuff turn your boot rein that is completely fine so for me i'm thinking right well this will be easier for me to turn my book this way so that's what i'm going to do and because it's in a c shape that way if you can imagine it's like a c i'm going to then just let me push this page out and break this spine a bit through my way <laughs> so i'm going to go with the flow of my wrist so you need to go with whichever your wrist goes and you will find her strokes a lot easier start from the point and always fan out from that point you see how you're getting that grain look and then you're going to go from here so for me there's two points to this bit so i'm going to go from this point here and we're going to flick this way like a fan for that section but then this is like another section so i'm going to bring that out and meet it up to that point there now don't worry if you go outside of your gray scale it makes it more natural as well you see and then we're going to go to what we call our kind of mid-tone so this will be sepia and we're going to start again from that same point we're going to flick out you don't have to do loads side by side just go with your natural wrist the way your wrist is able to go so straight see this dark bit here so for illustration purposes for the video you can see there's a section here and then a section here if it helps mark your sections out it makes no difference it just gives that it more depth because you'll go in with more shadow later so then this bit here i'm going to flick from one point to one side and from the other point to the other side and kind of meet it in the middle and then the same on here so long as you're always going with the way the artist has drawn the hair you're going to get a nice texture to your hair now before we move on to our next colour I always come back to the lightest which is cadmium yellow and I will fill in we're not flicking at this point I'm just filling in all the white space that may be left just lightly covering that area and then we will go in with our darkest one which is Van Dyke Brown and then we're going to flick from that centre point again but not as many this time we're going to kind of do more deeper stronger strokes through this and you still see all the others you've done underneath are still there so don't forget we've got two sections to this big bit so we're going to make a big bit in the middle and then fan it out and then the same here so what you're concentrating on doing is building a darker corner where the shadow where the hair tucks in so like this bit is going to be here is going to be darker than this bit on the top here so here you're going to concentrate on making that bit really dark just this corner and then concentrate on this section here here and here that's going to be a bit darker in the center because that's kind of tucked in between these two bumps to get what i mean so we're going to literally flick that out there and make it darker and then we're going to have a darker section just under here as well and what that does it just gives that extra depth to your hair it gives that more realistic look and then you can also go in here and you can make divots or what i call them in the hair where the bit a natural shadow you know where her dips in and out of each other doesn't it it's not always uniform and straight so i like to do that and it gives it a nice I've just lost a pencil but I'll be fine I'll find it later it gives it that nice uh, move movable texture to it if that's the right word so then I'm going to go back to yellow ochre and we're just going to reinforce the lines that we've made earlier or the flicks and again this is just filling in any white space because you, you won't have any white space and you don't have any white highlights either in her because her isn't white anywhere unless you're grey uh, and a really white grey at that and then come back in with 
our sepia again and then just flick some more of them in and this paper is actually taking i'm wondering if it is create space paper i'm gonna have to find out i think it is um but it, this these pencils are working extremely well on it and then we're going back to cadmium yellow which is our highlight our lightest value and we will just fill in again but the strokes stay as long as you keep light with your pencil you won't get rid of them strokes so there you go that's one whole section finished so because all for me all of her is this way i would color this if i was at home i would color all this this way because the, if i pull my arm out when you're coloring and you're using a pencil your natural ability to your wrist obviously is that way so when i'm looking at this page and i'm doing these flicks from this corner the natural way to follow that hair that's been drawn is to turn your book upside down so if i was to turn it this way and you can see how you've got it here i've then got to come down away from it down and it pulls here it's it's kind of like you get a stopper here on your wrist and it stops you from pulling the wrist down so then that is a lot of reasons why when you are pulling down this way you can't get that same natural stroke so you end up getting wonky wobbly lines um just let me see if i can turn this up there we go um, so it does help a lot if you can turn your book upside down. A lot of us streamers don't like doing that because obviously it, it deters from the page that you're colouring because it is upside down. But trust me, it makes it so much better when you turn it upside down. Everyone can see what they're doing. They can still follow you because they can turn their book upside down as well if you decide to start videoing in, in a later date. So I'm just going to bring this back down and I'm just going to show you the next section. Um, I'm going to explain it all again. Now these pencils are still sharp enough to continue to a next piece. So here, I'm going to start from here. So here's going to be, this is yellow, uh, cadmium yellow, which is our lightest value, remember. And then all I'm going to do is literally nice and lightly fill in all these sections. Now some people like to go dark first. That's totally fine. You can do that. Um, but I prefer to go um, from light to dark. I've just found that that's the way that works for me. But there is a lot of people that will start with the darkest one. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'll show you that one on one of these pieces where you can go from dark to light. So this whole uh, will be done step by step. So where you've got an even darker grey scale here still go over it and make your highlight purely because that's how you bring that darker gray scale to life by going over it with your lighter tone so don't be worried this whole section here is going to be a lot lighter so we're going to pull that out there as well and then that's the hat so we are then going to move on so i'm going to do these in sections as well so for me now this is getting too blunt can you see how it's got a blunt end even though the pencil looks sharp the edge is flat and blunt and that is no good for her you will still get some good strokes if i show you now so this is how i mean when i plan it out so lightly you see this section here comes down there so that's one section here and then i would split this into another section that comes down there and then i would work with that section here and then this littler section here so it would still give you some nice strokes but can you see how my strokes are wider than they were here and that's what i mean this is totally fine if you want to work with it like that i personally don't i will show you what it's like if it's not at a complete point but can you see how your strokes are way 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 um wider than they were when i did this over here so you lose the finesse of your flicks basically um and this is why i always like to use a really sharp pencil it doesn't do well for your pencil set but i don't understand why it's making that grid when i'm pulling it down it's doing something to my camera that's not really good but i'll have to leave it there 
so I've not sharpened my next tone which is sepia so that's got a blunt edge on it as well so I'm going to do this whole section then you can see the difference between the finesse and why I would um, sharpen my pencils so we're flicking it out again from that corner and then we're going to turn the book this way and we're going to flick from this corner because this is quite a sharp turn in the hair we've got to do a shorter curl to our flick and then just kind of bring that in and then before we go to our darkest we're going to come back with our lightest colour which is cadmium yellow and pull that in again and then you'll see there's not much of a difference to doing it unsharpened to really really sharp point I just prefer it I just like it looking more finesse if that makes sense and then we're going to come in with Van Dyke Brown again it's got a blunt flat edge to the point and we're going to start off down here and it just doesn't cut into it the same as it would if it was sharper so these shorter bits here we're going to come in and flick out like this and then we're going to go back to yellow ochre now this is where your sharp pencil would look a lot lot better because you can see here it's giving me thick strokes so it's flattening out more of the tooth of the paper than I would want it to where here you could still see lines through it so back in with sepia and I'm not purposely doing this one worse than I'm doing it exactly the same as I would have done that side I'm just trying to show you the difference between having a sharp pencil and not a sharp pencil because there really is method to the madness so because I know there's a hat there I'm just going to really deepen this edge up here and then I'm going to pull out my flicks from that so there you go so that is it if I can bring it closer that is what it looks like I'll just pull this into vision get this so you can see the strokes so can you see the strokes how fine and, and how many you've got in there compared to a blunt pencil now there is quite a lot in there there's quite a lot in there but they're not as defined as they are in this section and clean as they are so a pen a sharp pencil is the way to go so let me just sort my focus out again okay so we're going to turn our page back to our position we was in just going to come up got to watch because i don't know why it's doing that it's really bizarre Let me knock my um, zoom off and pull the camera down, see if that makes any difference. No, nope. we'll have to bear with this strange. I don't know what this is, it's like it's picking up something from the print. I don't know. So, again, with our Tagal, I'm just going to give myself a really nice part of my pencils. And the beauty of using a Tagal pencil sharpener like this, it hardly takes anything off your pencil. So when you come to doing her, you're not wasting a lot of your pencil when you're doing a realistic her. I shouldn't be um, chucking my pencils down like that either. Okay, so let's carry on with our flicking. So we're going in with the yellow oak now so i'm going to do this section here so what i'm going to stop about here so i'm going to start from our point up here and i'm going to flick outwards see 
the heavy grey scale to it you can feel it on the pencil like the grain from the grey scale or the print of the paper and that is the reason I like using my own um, paper I like colouring on because it kind of eliminates that because I use a more toothy page if that makes sense so then we're going to move in with sepia so they're the same four colours in exactly the same order so from your corner outwards and you can also come out a little bit out of the line of her that also helps with realism and you're just making sure you're keeping your flicks nice and light and then we go back with cadmium yellow and we fill in that heavy grey scale there and same with yellow ochre and we bring them flicks back in here it's a gorgeous caramel colour this absolutely gorgeous so then we're going to come in with ouch i just stabbed myself van dyke brown you can see that there it's doing it's not focusing trick isn't it there we go van dyke brown and this is our darkest value so again we're going to really make this section dark in this point here but don't forget this section is separate so i'm going to really deepen that up and i'm going to pull some of mine from here some of the flicks from there and then start going round oops and then this way as well and flicking towards that centre instead of keep uh, blowing I'm just going to use my brush and then I'm going to come back to our yellow ochre and just try and get that to focus up a bit better No, I, no idea why it's doing that on that screen it's really frustrating and then back to our sepia just making sure we're adding that in and then back to van dyke I'm just going to really darken that up there and then really deepen up that edge there and pull that Van Dyke into that corner. Same with under here. Turn your pencil so you keep your point for longer. So I need a little bit of the yellow ochre here because that's going to run to there so I'm turn my page around a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing so here we're going to work from this point again and flick find our edge which is there and then we can follow that flick action round flicking action <laughs> keep turning your book to where your wrist feels comfortable so we're going to be coming right up to here so this is our guide for this one and same guide for there if you need to do this and then flick 
so that bit can be virtually coloured and then start flicking from here and then we're moving in with sepia and then we're going to come here again mark out your lines and then flick towards your centre again not doing as many flicks close together you want to leave a little line in between there's got to have a bit of that other colour that squaring is really doing a number on my eyes I'm really sorry if it's affecting your eyes I'm just seeing if I can stop it somehow if I knock it out of focus there we go that might be better I have no idea I've never come across and I've got loads of grayscale books and I have never come across that before so flicking it round and then in with your Van Dyke brown it might not pick up on them Van Dyke brown I'm going to come up here and really darken that section there because that's going to travel off into there. We can come back in with a darker colour or a black for shadows later. And then you're going to flick your section in here as well. And don't think if, if I, for example, I go, <gasps> whoops! don't worry about it because it'll just blend in don't think you've messed it up if you go out, out of the lines or you go completely wrong uh, cadmium yellow this is our lightest value again and we're just going to lightly colour in all them white areas if there is any left and then again back in with yellow ochre trying to get it to um, focus there and then back in with sepia and just add a few more little detailed lines in that's really noticeable so all these are going to be quite dark career at the back but then we're going to go back to our yellow ochre and start on our next section so this is our next section so from up here at the top all the way down here all the way around and that'll be our next section there this is the whole section we're working in now but in this section you've also got another section here you see this so that is one section and that is another so potentially in this space you've got three different sections so from here the highlight is starting at the top and down at the bottom it's dark so our highlight is not up there so what we're going to be doing is yellow ochre on this section and we are going to do not so many flicks here into our highlighted area but we are going to be doing most of the flicks coming round like this to that centre point as long as your pencils are sharp you'll be fine then in with sepia so again we'll just be taking sepia a little tiny bit at the top Here. and we'll be flicking that down into that section there and then we'll be coming up from this section here round and I'm going to put a deeper line in the edge because that's where we're going to have a shadow in with our Van Dyke brown 
but I'll show that or not. No, it's not going to show, but it's Van Dyke Brown. Uh, let's just sharpen it. So I can only have the zoom in the right position for the pencils on the page, but then I get that horrible squaring what's going on. So a tiny little bit here. Whoops, I just broke my tip. And then I'm just going to follow this little line here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cast a bit of a shadow off from it. And then this section, I'm going to pull this all round here where it's dark. I'm going to pull all that round. And then a little bit round here. So around here, just putting a bit of a shadow underneath that. And then we're going back to yellow ochre. And again, now the most of our just bear with me a second. So we've got a darker section in the middle of here, but all this is light and this is light. So I'm going to bring this forward to that centre point and I'm going to come through the middle to emphasise that dark bit. And then I'm going to meet with these flicks on this side with the yellow ochre. I'm going to flick all that yellow ochre into that centre section where the highlight is. And then a sepia. These are really out of focus, I do apologise. But I am speaking them out, so hopefully you'll be able to follow. And flicking this side towards that centre bit here. Oh dear, my dog's having a bit of a funky noise then. Lights so that in, and then we're going to go back with our lightest value cadmium yellow and we're going to fill in that whiter space again and then we're going to bring our darkest value which is Van Dyke Brown six now and we're going to really deepen up this section here because this is meant to be kind of underneath that so we're going to put our shadow in and then we're going to start flicking from that shadow out and come through that a little bit there and then we're going to flick again this side You do want some of your darker values to flick through your highlighted values. So don't be worried if you do go over because that adds to the effect and that's what you want. I'm going to just run that Van Dyke brown there through there. And again it just adds to it back in with that cadmium yellow there because I've not done that on that section and then back with the yellow ochre just to break that up a bit this is yellow ochre and then back 
with our sepia I'm just going to add a bit of sepia into that highlight just a tiny bit and same into here just a very light layer bringing this idea of that and then we've got one last section here so I'm going to come in again I'm going to turn my page to where it's comfortable for my wrist and hopefully I've not been in shot in frame here so we're going to have some little flicks heading into we think this is our point here flick round and then this is our point up here so we're going to flick towards that centre this way towards me then we'll use sepia just getting my point nice and sharp again I'm going to get some little ones coming from this point up. So he's bending like a C shape or like the top of a C. I feel like I'm out of practice with the um, step by step colour alongs. I've not done one since the background series in January. <laughs> So I hope it's I'm making it easy for you to follow. And then this is going to come up here, right into this point here. And that's the hat there. So I'm just going to pull that bit in there. There's no point flicking it because it's just too far. It's too small of an area. But here we want a nice edge to that hat. Uh, that would leave a shadow on the hair underneath so we'll sort the shadow out in a second when we've done the Van Dyke I'm going to show you that before I move on to the other side so this is Van Dyke brown now trying to get it to focus and then we're going to flick then we're going to flick Just from that centre point out. Now I'm going to go back with the yellow ochre and flick the yellow ochre in. And again, this is just to fill in any white space in your highlighted area back with your lightest value which was cadmium yellow so back with my van dyke brown and what i'm going to do where well, we've had this section that was really dark here so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this i'm going to really darken that up but I'm doing a shadow and I am doing scumbling motion but you can still see the lines that I've used underneath but yeah it's still creating the shadow of the hat at the same time that I'm colouring it in and that's what we want we don't want to press on too hard that it takes away all the hard work that you've just done but enough that it casts a shadow of that hat so now we're getting a bit of depth underneath the hat we can add a bit of black into there as well if i wanted to and then obviously this is coming above these so there'll be a shadow under here from all these pieces here again i'm just doing this lightly and then flick and that just gets rid of that edge that you've created from that shadow and then under here is all going to be really dark so 
and then I'll show you the trick I do to piece it all out again. I'm just going to pop a little shadow in that there. Pull that out. I always do what I'm doing to so just lift this up and have a look at what's happening with the hair um, and then because sometimes you think oh it doesn't look very good but then you pull it out and look and it looks absolutely amazing so what I'm going to do I'm just going to finish this section here and then the rest we'll do on time lapse and I'll come back to you when we've done the end so I'm just going to explain this section here and again I can have it upside down because it's the way my wrist goes so that's what I want to do for this bit here so back with our lowest or lightest value which is cadmium yellow we're going to do them highlights again and this is just really repetitive it's going to be exactly the same I've just been saying um, and it's just practice 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 and you will get it one i used to just do the shadows and the highlights with her and i couldn't do the flicking and then it was just practice 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 and then it just started looking so i know you can do it i think my pencil is sharpening you don't to you So I'm just going to flick all this out. Again, you've got loads of different elements to this. So what I would do now is I'm going to take this as one big section like this. And I'm going to just work the flicks as though it's one big piece. And then I'll use the sections. So if you're a bit more advanced in your colouring, you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to use the flicks here and just fill that whole, whole area with them flicks and then with the sepia I'm going to break that down so this is another quick way of doing it so if you think I've got a section here and then I've got another section coming here and that's coming round into there so that's stopping the it's meeting up with that piece but that piece goes here and then this is a little section here and then this is one great big section that's circling that other section so you can piece it out like this if you're not very good where I would have just done it with my pencil with the flicks I'm just going to mark it out like that so then make sure my pencil's really sharp and then I'll work in each little section so from this point here we're going to flick in the middle and then fan it out and then we're going to come from here work from the middle and then fan it out fan it out Same from this section, we're going to come right from this corner and we're going to fan it out because it comes to that point there and then this corner we're going to fan out that way and start curving, just get rid of any dust you've got and then this is going to be dark in this section here so I'll start with your shadow bit and then flick out from there following your curve round and then a little bit out from here so you'll get a little highlight here highlight here highlight here highlight there and then this section is just going to come it's going to have quite a big highlighted area so we'll come from this side and then work them into that section then after that tone before you go to your darkest tone I always go back to the lightest tone which is cadmium yellow and I will then lightly just cover all them areas where we've got highlights again 
again and then we'll go back keeping my pencil sharp remember and we'll then go back to this section and re-flick them in again layering up is really 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 good especially when you want a really good realistic look so it may take you a while to do the hair off so i've done pages that have took me a whole day just to do the hair i mean i've been going how long have we been recording 46 minutes and we've only done this section it's probably quite quick for me that actually So then we come in with our darkest value which is Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to make sure this is sharp and you can already see here where the depth is forming already so working with that so then we've got to find this depth here so if you find it easier shade in your corners first I'm showing you many different ways that I tackle a page to just make it stand out a bit more and then I'm going to flick out the Van Dyke there okay and then so we've got another corner or dip here and then that also follows round and this is going to be really dark under here so we'll probably add a bit of black to that section as well so we'll flick out that way and then this way you add the dark that's going to swell out to like here and go into that corner So then I'm going to flick out there and then flick out this section here. And then you're going to have a darker section here. So then you're going to flick out again from that corner. And this bit here is going to create another corner of dark here and then you're going to flick from there out you see how it gives it all that shape now of where her has been tucked away so before i do the time lapse section i'm just going to get a black So with this one, this is ivory black. I'm making sure it's really, really sharp. So you've got ivory black here. And what I'm going to do, you can see this from the front section. So what I'm going to do under here, where the hat, you're going to have the darkest bit. And I go underneath here. And I'm really sharpening that edge up now. And it just adds to the depth here but my example is when it comes to really dark gray scale you can still make it look just as good as if it was a lighter gray scale i really enjoy doing dark really dark i mean some you do get some that are extremely dark they are a lot harder to work with but it can be done so what we're going to do with all this black now everywhere with ivory black we had a nice deep inlay i'm going to go around with this and really sharpen it up And then I may even add some flicks in if I want to. That helps deepen it up as well. You see? And then I 
to just find where all these points and corners are. I just emphasize them corners and then flick out if I want to or need to. You'll have to judge how it is for you in your book. Um, turning the page because my light's reflecting got a bit of wax bloom in places so it's reflecting and it's I can't see what I'm doing <laughs> and then the same section here it went really dark here so I'm going to flick one way and then I'm going to flick the other way why am not hit the screen So a good friend of mine said to me, Shell, you need to get back to your colour alongs. So you know who you are. This is me getting back to my colour along. So if you have enjoyed this her tutorial or series that I will be doing, I'll be adding far more, uh, more like swatches of different ranges of colours and things like that. If you have really enjoyed it, please comment below and let me know. And then if there is more you want me to do, I will certainly do it. Or if there's any suggestions of things you'd like to see me doing, please add that on. I'm just going to add all these in just to them sections now where it's really, really, really dark. Shadows. A lot of people don't like working with black and I love it but I think that comes from my makeup artistry days because I was always used scared of using the black eyeliner and stuff and then I ended up just where it became my best friend and it became my best asset in my makeup box and when you can learn to use the black in makeup you crack it. <laughs> So I need to go up here to this one. Sorry, I'm going to completely turn it around. And I need to work just in this little section here. So again, I think this is kind of like a flower of some form. So there's going to be a shadow under there. And that's going to come right up. Into there. And then flick some dark from that corner out. Okay, so that is the most part of it done. The rest of it I'm just going to do in time lapse. And then I will come back to you at the end. And it's just going to be using the same four pencils.
right there you are everyone in the color order um i'll just get these in the right color order for you one second Okay, so there's your colour combo, if you can see them, I'm going to take a screenshot of them, let me just bring you in uh, a bit closer there, let me just get it under the light, can you see that there, hopefully you can, let's just play with the um, zoom a little bit. I think it's more the light that needs to be on them than anything else. So anyway, it's ivory black, Van Dyke brown, sepia, um, yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. So I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed being, <laughs> doing an actual step-by-step -step colouring along um, with you all. I've not done one for absolutely, well, since background dreary, really. Um, I don't like where it's done that, there, it's not very clear. But as you can see there, that is exactly how you go from a dark grey scale like this. So let's compare now to the second image in the book. If you compare, this is the first image and then that's how dark the other grey scale was. Now I've brightened my screen because of the daylight that's coming in. So it probably is slightly darker than that in the real book but you can see the difference now if i do that and then that which is absolutely stunning you're bringing it to life gorgeously so i hope you've enjoyed that step-by-step -step tutorial um if you want to see any more please do comment below if you like what you see and you like my channel please hit the subscribe button and the bell give it a little ding and you will get a notification when i go live or upload videos i do go live every friday and sunday at 8 p.m and at the minute um i've started doing tuesday mornings but they are on and off at the minute um but i do stream quite a lot and now i'm going to be uploading some color alongs as well along the way so please do stay tuned with the channel there will be different things coming on um, but for now that's all for me enjoy coloring her and i will see you in my next video bye everyone thank you so much for watching today if you do like what you've seen on my channel please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications bye